It's a, it's a pretty big question. There's so many faucets about it. Um, I'm old enough to remember uh, where music was really a, a, a bit, a slightly different thing than it is today, where it had a stronger political and ideological uh, dimension than it does today. I think those days are in many ways over. There are now so incredibly rich ways of expressing um, a position that you have on 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 society so that music is sort of is is losing its its um, foothold there i think and i don't think that's ever going to come back and i don't think the thing where kids listening to the wrong kind of music you know scare the hell out of their parents i don't think that's coming back either but the interesting thing is that it still has this effect it's it's different from other arts i think music is that it has this direct effect on your body and your mind it's actually sort of reprogramming you real time while you're listening to it and and that's something that a lot of art forms maybe movies has but it's it's still a different thing and it still is true that i think it's the only art form where people have actually killed each other because one person didn't like the right style you know the same style as the other one did i don't think that's ever happened in ballet or you know so, so it, it is a it's, it is a very different thing. Um, so, so there's there's that part. Um, and seeing being old enough is I was I was also, you know, I was not well in a way part of at least in Sweden the uh, not really, but you know on the fringe of the punk thing when that happened. So that was a very very special time and a very special time for music where someone people can get out and say, I I, I don't have a clue how to do this. Uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's sort of in that spirit that we do our products, Propellerhead, I think. You know, they're used by big stars and people who are extremely talented musicians, but they're also used by people who, who don't have a clue and don't care too much about it and just want to have fun. But they do want something real. They want authentic sound, and they want to have the, you know, the, the experience of, of, of using uh, real stuff. So that, that part is, I think, is, of course, that's going to continue. Where that's going to land, I don't know. There's also a difference in music compared to some other, uh, um, other types of expression is that you can't dumb it down uh, too much uh, because it, you won't be able to feel that it's your creation. And now I'm talking about creating music more than just playing because those are also two different things. You might play in a band, play someone's music, play in a big band, but what I'm talking about here is creating your own music, uh, basically writing it or at least doing your own production or remixing or whatever it is. So if you take a camera and you point it at someone and you take a picture, you will really feel that that is your picture, it's my creation. And the camera might be totally automatic. It will set the lighting, it will set the focus, it might do other things. You still feel it's your creation. It's not that way with music. If you make a computer uh, do too much of the work, you very quickly run to, into a situation where you feel it's not my, it's not really my thing. So I, I think that there will be continue to be uh, um, sort of um, a demand uh, or a requirement rather to invest. If you want to make music, even if it's with a computer, even if it's with high tech, uh, there's going to be a requirement that you invest in learning and practicing and training and doing something and failing and doing it again and getting better. And now what we're doing, because this is what we do, I'm thinking about the products we're making and, and record. And the interesting thing is that when, when you do a product like we do, when you've done it, you work on it for so long, you sort of lose a little bit of perspective what it is you've done. Now record is out since September. And now when I look back at it, I realize that what we were betting on was that we could do a product that was complex. That it had all what I think is the good complexity of a rich environment that allows you to do a lot of things, different types of exploring. Uh, so allows you to do the, the beautiful complexity of writing and composing and, and, and producing and mixing music without the stupid and ugly complexity of badly designed software. So some people said to us, you can't do that, you can't do 
you know, you, if you want to make it, you say it's going to be simple, you got to take out stuff. And we refused to do that. So we, we made this rich product, uh, but still, you know, still com complex in the good way. And that for me is, um, that gives me hope. Because it, because since it worked, since since record is a is a very successful product that and together with reason, uh, that gives me hope because it means that yes, there are people who are, if you give them take away some of the stupid stuff, they're very very happy to invest in the beautiful complexity of making music. And I, I've been involved in in trying to um, minimize the amount of, of of piracy through education. And of course I do that to protect my company because we make software. But there's also another dimension just for me personally in this. And I don't know where it's going with music, but when I think about movies, I, this is the way I think about it. I think that, you know, the big, big productions, uh, that the big production houses and movie companies can do, they will always be there because they can always sell little plastic figurines or t-shirts or stuff, you know, work together with McDonald's or something to launch their movie. So I don't think they'll be so affected by piracy, actually. You know, sometimes some people seem to want to big the, give the big companies a kick in the butt. By, and I don't think they're doing that at all. I think they're maybe in a way playing into their hands. So that's one end of the scale. And then you have the completely opposite end of the scale, which is all the stuff that we're seeing doing, incredible stuff happening on YouTube that people just do out of the love of it, uh, with no budget at all and without any intent of making money. And that also, that also is going to work. The problem for me is in the middle layer. Because, and that, because that's my problem because I love those movies, smaller, independent movies. I don't know, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, that kind of thing. They can never sell plastic figures at McDonald's with that movie, but they do need a big production budget to do it because it contained, you know, there was good actors and special effects and stuff. Um, so, and that's, that's what I'm afraid of. And it, you can see it happening all the way through history that certain cultural layers get sort of weeded out for economical reasons. And... Um, Right now, the talk is that musicians are going to go live, and that's where the money is. Not all musicians want to play live, I think. So I would really hope that there would be, that there will be a way for musicians in the future that want to quit their day jobs, that want to do more elaborate, maybe even pretentious projects uh, that, that, that require time and money and investment, and that there will be people who are prepared to pay for that because that's the only way it's going to ever happen uh, and I, so, I, but how that's going to work I don't know, other people know much more about this than I do oh absolutely uh, I mean it, it's incredible you just go onto MySpace or YouTube and see how creative people are it's just, it's, the whole planet is exploding with different types of creativity and it's and it's uh, visual and it's musical and it's crossover and it's all that. So, uh, no, that's that's this is a great time to be creative in. Absolutely. Oh. 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 Oh.